Hello, I'm Daniel Kent Newmeyer, the Connecticut strategist. People have been talking about an evolving Supreme Court challenge against the taxation of private homes, family vehicles, and today I am talking with the originator of this movement, Joe Petrina. Welcome, Joe. Hi, Dan. Thanks. Uh, the case is called the Hoodwink Litigation Case. You see, after explaining the ideas of the case to my wife, Laura, she blurted out, we were hoodwinked. So I went with that. The Hoodwink case is rooted in the U.S. Constitution, which clearly spells out the limits of taxation as follows. First, only legislatures can levy tax, not municipalities. And second, taxes can only be applied to commercial activity like income sales and profits. Dormant property, like my house and your house, are off limits to this authority. I see. That's quite crystal clear. But can't the law be changed to allow property tax anyway? Yeah. People always ask me this. They can just change the law. Well, they can't. And here's why. In America, and only in America, are citizens born with what are called natural rights. The natural rights to life, liberty, and property. Exactly. Natural rights are inalienable, meaning they cannot be given away nor taken away to fund any operation of government. By any operation of government, I assume you mean that neither popular voting, activist judges, hmm. executive orders, nor legislation can overturn these natural rights, Joe? Correct. Perfectly put. But there's more. Eight constitutional clauses were designed to back up natural rights. These include the tax origination, the one I just mentioned. Only mm -hmm. legislatures can levy a tax, not municipalities. Indirect taxation. Transactions be ta can be taxed, not dormant property. Income. Tax rates on earnings can vary, but property is off limits. The rate is zero. Okay, then there's property taking. So some, some local governments are actually taking people's homes now without going through due process, uh, you know, through courts. It's outrageous. They just, they just come and take, and they put your house up for sale. It's unbelievable. All right, then the next one I would mention is contracts. Most people think that somehow their municipality has authority over them, and they don't, unless you have a signed contract with a municipal legal entity, which is like McDonald's or General Motors, you don't have an obligation to the municipality. So should I run down and sign a contract for them to tax us? No. No. no, no don't ask for and trouble. And I never signed one. Don't ask for trouble. <laughs> By the way, I'm just going to mention one here. Direct taxation. This is an in the, in the Constitution. It's an old clause and was used after the War of 1812. They need to pay for the war. And there's a clause that says... You can tax the people, mm -hmm. you know, not, not their transactions, the people themselves, but everyone has to chip in the same amount. So after the War of 1812, everyone in the country had to chip in, pay for the war. Well, should I be taking notes on all this? Yeah, a lot of stuff, uh, Joe. A lot of Where stuff. Where can we find We're it We're just all? giving you a flavor here, <laughs> but uh, uh, all of it is laid out and the research and the website, you can go there, hoodwink.net, and we'll describe it shortly. Well, why don't you summarize what this envisioned Supreme Court case would look like for yeah. us, Joe? So all, what we just went through is a little bit of the research. Uh, mm -hmm. The Hoodwink litigation proposal has the United States, the United States, bringing suit against the states, any state, taxing the people's property. A very unique f f framework. The Hoodwink plaint of we the people... We are the United States. We the people. That All was established. Us, yeah. yeah. Argues that private property taxation by state governors, the states, stands in conflict with the eight constitutional clauses just mentioned that protect the people's natural right to unencumbered property. You see, in attacking property, the governors attack America itself. They may not understand it, but that's what they're doing. Property adjudication, therefore, solely belongs with the highest court. It's not a low-end uh, case. So this really affects everything then, doesn't it, Joe? I mean, it seems to, but in a way, not really. Oh, here's, okay. here's, here's, a, here's the interesting so thing. So 
Well, I mean, yeah. people are thinking, well, this is going to tear down everything that right, we have. Right. That's but, what and we seems. can't have that. Yeah. But but it's really not. What it's doing is saying you can only come at us one way. Yeah, the, right? the, the, right the constitutional that? way. It has right. to be done correctly. And uh, the suit says you, you must, uh, you know, taxes correctly, income taxes, sales taxes, what have you. But it leaves the government with the ability to fund its programs like free K-12 to education, food stamps, Medicaid, etc., as long as it's legislatively approved taxes levied upon commercial right. so activity. So we still get everything anything you want. Anything you want. Anything you want, but you, you, you got to go about it the constitutionally. That's right. Right. That makes sense to me. Would the Supreme Court even take such a case, yeah, Joe, people do you say, think? People laugh and say, they'll never take such a case. You know, this is, a, But there is a good chance. Um, First of all, there's no case of greater importance to the future of the country since property is really under attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to protect that at all cost. But there is more. Chief Justice Roberts already invited property cases normally tied to state courts to be brought to higher consideration. In the court's 2019, just a few years ago, ruling on the Rosemary Knick case versus the township of Scott, Pennsylvania, look it up, the Chief Justice stated, we now conclude that the state litigation requirement imposes an unjustifiable burden on the property owner's claim that his or her land has been effectively taken for public benefit without the government paying just compensation. And the outcome of all this, Joe? Well, the outcome, if we can get the case properly framed and get it considered by the court, is that a ruling on the taxation of one's home, family vehicles, and financial savings, which are now even being considered, will find its way to the highest court. Ultimately, by drawing a line in the sand for property, the court will assure we the people, this very big thing here, that political outcomes will never undermine natural rights. This means that no political configuration of government can authorize wealth taking from one's home, bank account, investment portfolio, or any other asset to fund municipal, state, or federal budgets. Well, that's quite a landmark case. I suppose a hefty budget is going to be needed to fund this litigation, isn't it? Yeah, I'm the only one working for free here. <laughs> the, the, the legal system is all on payroll. So we're looking for two levels of support. Major sponsors should contact me directly, and retail sponsors can contribute via GoFundMe. We invite everyone to visit hoodwink.net to review the content and consider the support options. A win here liberates every family in America. That's hoodwink.net. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate right. you bringing you, this Dan. forward. Yeah, and yeah. I'm going to follow it the whole way. Thank you, Doke.